I've been thinking about doing a video on public domain characters for a while, and your boy Zack, he got excited, a little too excited, about Superman going into the public domain in 2033. That's a good 12 years from now, but he was acting like an excited Elrond the Wise. Dude, calm down. I know it's a short time for you, but all of us don't age in elf years. A decade is a long time, and I'm sure Time Warner's lawyers will find a way to keep DC Comics characters out of the public domain. But if they didn't, it would be a game changer. So here's how the public domain works. Anything that's not copyrighted can be used by anyone. You don't have to use the concept exactly as it was created. You can change it however you want, retell the story, or continue where the original left off. You can change the look of the character, the sex, sexuality, religion, do whatever you want. The really cool part is that anyone can use public domain concepts, even if those same concepts are already being used by other people. This is how you can have multiple versions of Sherlock Holmes running on TV and in films and video games at the same time. But Sherlock Holmes brings up a tricky issue with public domain. All of the stories aren't in the public domain. The last 10 Holmes stories were published between 1923 and 1927, so they're still protected by copyright law, specifically U.S. copyright law. That's another tricky issue. Stories can be copyrighted in various countries, so you'll need to make sure that they're free to use in your country or whichever country you intend to publish in, otherwise you can get sued. There's another tricky issue, and this comes up a lot with public domain comic book characters, and it's trademarks and current copyright ownership. Let's do the latter one first, and let's use an example. Blue Beetle. The original Blue Beetle, Dan Garrett, was published in Fox and then Charlton Comics. All of these stories are in the public domain because no proper copyright was filed. This happens with a number of Golden Age comic book characters. Companies went defunct or were purchased by their competitors, but no one renewed the original copyrights, so those stories are free to use. Dan Garrett is really interesting because his original origin and power set changed when he moved from Fox to Charlton. At Fox, he was a former cop who used a bulletproof suit designed by Dr. Franz, his mentor. Later, Dr. Franz created a vitamin called 2X that gave Garrett super strength, enhanced speed and healing, heightened senses, and enhanced intelligence. The effects didn't last long though. The weird part is that he never carried the pills on him. He'd always have to go back to Dr. Franz's store. It's like, dude, there are these magical things called pockets. Use them. Real quick about the vitamin thing. There was a common trope in Golden Age books. I haven't looked to see who started it, but there was at least one hero at every company who popped pills to get his powers. Now, when the character moved over to Charlton, he was revamped. He became an archaeologist who found an Egyptian scarab that granted him his powers when he said Kaija Da. His protege Ted Court becomes the second Blue Beetle when Garrett is killed. Court never gets the scarab to work for him, so he's basically a gadget man. Cool quick note, if you've ever thought that Blue Beetle's design looks a lot like Spider-Man, that's because Steve Ditko designed it. All three of these are in the public domain, but I think some of you have guessed the problem. DC Comics owns a copyright to Ted Court, Dead Garrett, and Blue Beetle. So if you plan on using these characters, you're going to have to make sure you either stick to the original stories or whatever you change or add cannot, and I repeat, cannot be in any way like what DC Comics did. For example, if you wanted to pass the scarab on to someone else who could use it, they can't be like Jaime Reyes. They literally can't be Jaime. He's copyrighted. They can't have the armor. The scarab can't do anything that the current DC version can do unless the original version could already do it or you have to have an in-story explanation that is in no way similar to what DC's explanation is. It's really, really tricky, so a good rule of thumb is to look at what DC Comics has done, and don't do that. I ran into this problem when I stumbled onto this website for public domain characters. I'll link to it below. I had this really cool idea about using a Freedom Fighters. It was inspired by my annoyance with how House of M happened, and I just thought, what if Scarlet Witch wasn't crazy? What if she did that on purpose, and then tried to hide what she did by altering things just enough so that no one could remember things the way that they were, and the heroes wouldn't know who they were either. In fact, they would be altered enough that their current lives would prevent them from accessing their powers. So I came up with what I wanted, and when I got to the Ray, I thought the easiest way would be to make him light sensitive. But then I checked, and that's what DC did. So then I had to come up with something else, and this created a problem because the copyrighted versions of the Ray, the original and the current one, both use ideas I wanted to use. That's really the gist of the copyright character's problem. As long as you avoid what other people did, you're good. Now, there is some trickiness with some characters like Thor. You can use Thor, however, you will need to make sure you avoid anything specific to Marvel's version. And this includes making him a blonde. The actual Thor is a redhead. 
making him blonde will get you sued and Papa Disney loves a lawsuit. So can't use the same hair, can't use the same hammer design. Quick note, in some versions of the myth, Thor's hammer is bent. Take that as you will. Probably want to stay away from the winged helmets and pretty much whatever he looks like in Marvel, avoid it. And obviously any of his story elements from Marvel are no-nos. But you can do whatever else you want. For example, there was a webcomic that I used to read about Thor as a kid and it was pretty fun and totally protected from Papa Disney or at the time, Marvel. Where things get really tricky though is with trademarks. So here's a fun bit of trivia. Captain Marvel, the real Captain Marvel, is in the public domain. So those original stories in Wiz Comics and Captain Marvel Adventures are up for grabs. The problem is that Marvel Comics owns a trademark for Captain Marvel and DC Comics owns a trademark for Shazam and Billy Batson. What this means is that you can't use any of those names on the cover of the book, but you can use them in the interior pages. So you can call them Captain Marvel and Billy Batson and he can say Shazam, but you can't put that on the cover. But it gets trickier because trademarks don't stop you from using words. The trademark only protects against competition, specifically people confusing one product for another. So if I call my comic Shazam, would people think it was DC's Captain Marvel? Probably. So I can't do that or I'll be sued. But if I use Shazam as the name of a clothing line, it's fine. I could actually trademark it for the clothing line. Trademarks don't mean you own the word. It's just to notice that this word is uniquely associated with your product so no one else can use the same word for a similar product. Where this can be a problem is that it's possible for the design of a character to be covered by this. So if you use Captain Marvel, it's possible that using versions of his suit outside of his original design can get you sued, but even using the original design itself could get you sued, especially if you put it on a cover, because people would obviously think it was DC's Captain Marvel. And this gets us back to your boy Zack excitement over Superman going into the public domain. Even if that happened, which I'm sure Time Warner will find a way to block, you'd never be able to get away with using the original Superman design because people would automatically think about DC's version, which would violate their trademark. This would definitely end up going to court though, because the original design technically isn't covered by the trademark. You could call him Superman, but you couldn't put that in the title because DC owns that as well. Any character that wasn't in the original Action Comics debut would be off limits, so there goes most of Superman's cast. You could have him fly by coming up with some other way he'd get those powers. You just have to make sure DC never did anything like that. And even then, the trademark makes it tricky. The best way to get around this is to use another public domain character, if you don't want to create one of your own. That way you can have all the powers you want without having to worry about this. There are plenty of Superman-like characters to choose from. Another fun thing is that you're not limited to one character. You can use a little of this character and a little of that one and make something wholly new and that will be protected by a copyright. For example, the idea I mentioned based on the Freedom Fighters is copyrighted. First by me writing it down years ago, second by me writing a few scenes by hand and then typing them up, second by me talking about it in this video. Even though I didn't give enough information for anyone to use, these versions are my versions and only I can use them. But anyone can take those characters and do anything else they want with them. So if you're struggling for ideas, check out public domain characters. They're basically free to use, and it's actually fun to find out all the kooky stories that got published. Even better, you can read them online at Comic Book Plus and Digital Comic Museum. I'll leave the links below. They've got a good amount of old comics that you can read and steal from, or revamp, or just enjoy. So have at it. Nobody else is using these characters, so why not have a go?